Hello, today I'm going to go through, I'm going to do a video and I'm going to do something because we've been getting a lot of feedback on our Garmin videos and I think this video is really going to help you out. We're going to deep dive and we're going to go through every one of the sonar settings one by one, explain what it does so that you have a better understanding of how you can adjust and dial in your sonar. Now I know this is going to be extremely helpful because I understand the frustration that you have when you're working Monday through Friday, Saturday comes and you get to go out on the boat and to go fishing and you really can't waste a lot of time on the only day that you get to go fishing to play around with the sonar settings and it could be really frustrating when you got one day a week, maybe weather's not good, you get two days a month that you could go out on the boat to really fine tune your sonar settings. So let's go ahead and jump right in and elevate your sonar settings game. So the very first item on the menu is the gain. And the gain, what it does is the gain controls the sensitivity of the transducer. So the higher the gain, the more sensitivity, making the sonar more responsive to weaker echoes. And this is gonna be really useful for detecting small or distant targets in situations of low visibility. Increasing the gain also increases the amount of noise that you could see on your screen. And this can make it difficult for new uh, users with sonar to really distinguish what they're seeing on their sonar screen. And then lowering the gain is gonna reduce the sensitivity, making the sonar less responsive to weaker echoes. This setting can help reduce clutter on the display caused by background noise and interference, and it's gonna provide a clear view of larger and more prominent targets. Now, the next item on the menu is the frequency that your transducer is running on, and really the available frequencies that your transducer can run on. The frequency refers to the number of sound waves sent and received per second. So for example, a frequency of 50 kilohertz is gonna be equal to 50,000 sound waves transmitted and received per second. And then a frequency of 200 kilohertz is equal to 200,000 sound waves transmitted and received per second. Higher frequencies should really be used in shallower fishing and then lower frequencies should be used in deep water fishing and guys when we're talking about shallow we're talking about I would say 800 feet or less is where you would want to be running those high frequencies and then the other frequencies that you may have uh, if you have a chirp transducer are the chirp frequency so chirp uh, frequency emits a range of frequencies to give you an even better image on your screen so if you're using chirp frequencies again you're gonna want to use a high chirp for shallow water and low chirp for deep water fishing and then remember that shallow water would be defined at anything around 800 feet or less 800 feet or less you want to use high chirp and then the next item is the zoom feature the zoom feature is going to allow you to enhance the detail and clarity of the objects within the selected area this feature is also very useful for pinpointing targets or observing details in bottom structure or a particular section within the water column now within the zoom feature there's three different options that you can adjust and the first one is the manual zoom and this allows Allows you to set the magnified area manual. The second one is the magnify feature and this allows you to enlarge a portion of the screen and enhance the resolution and detail of the selected area. Then the third one on the menu is the bottom lock feature. And the bottom lock feature, what this does is going to keep the bottom of the display fixed. So this is going to ensure the bottom stays in the same location even if you move into deeper water. And this prevents you from having to have to adjust the screen every time uh, if you're going over drop-offs and the bottom might fall out of your screen. The next item is the range. This determines the depth range that is displayed on the screen. So in other words, by adjusting the range, you can control how much of the water column is visible from the surface to the bottom. So for example, setting the range from zero to 100 feet will display from the surface to 100 feet down. So this is gonna allow you to focus on specific depth ranges based on your fishing needs. The next item on the menu list is called transmit. Now this transmit, what it does is it turns the transducer are on or off and this is going to be very useful if you power on your unit while the boat's out of the water because it's going to ensure that the transducer does not get overheated and damaged now if you turn it off don't forget to turn it back on when you put your boat in the water and always remember never turn on your transducer with the boat outside of the water now the next option on the menu is the sonar setup option this is an extensive list of menu options that you can adjust the first one in the sonar setup list is the scroll speed. 
and the scroll speed refers to how quickly the sonar display updates as the boat moves through the water. So a higher scroll speed means that the display updates more frequently, providing real-time data as to what's under the boat. Now this is gonna be especially useful for fast-moving boats. And then a slower scroll speed will update the display less frequently. And this can be very useful when you're anchored. This is gonna help stabilize the image and reduce the flattening effect when anchored over structure. The next item is the noise reject feature. Now this menu has five options within it that can be adjusted. So the noise reject feature helps you filter out unwanted signals and interference from your sonar display. This is gonna really improve the clarity of the sonar image and it's gonna make it easier to identify fish and underwater structure. Now, the first item in the noise reject feature is called interference. Now, this adjusts the sensitivity of the sonar to reduce the effects of other nearby sources of noise. This is gonna be really useful when fishing in a crowded area of boats where their sonar can interfere with your sonar. Now, the next item that we have is called the color limit feature, and this is gonna allow you to increase or reduce certain colors that are gonna be returned on the display image of the radar. And this can really help clear up the image by reducing or eliminating smaller objects or marks and they're only gonna leave the more pronounced larger targets on the screen. The next uh, feature is called smoothing. So smoothing helps reduce noise and signal fluctuations on the sonar display meaning that it removes noise that is not part of the standard sonar return. So this is gonna work by averaging out small variations in the sonar data. And these variations could be caused by a lot of different factors such as waves and the surf, the movement of the boat, and other electronic interference. By applying the smoothing feature, the sonar image is gonna become more stable and easier for you to interpret. Now, the next feature is called surface noise. Now, this is gonna help suppress unwanted signals from the surface of the water, which is gonna allow you to clearly focus on what's happening on below the surface of the water. And surface noise, guys, can be caused by a lot of different things. It could be by waves, boat wake, the wind, floating debris that's in the water. Now, the surface noise feature really can help improve Improve the quality of the sonar image and enhance the accuracy of the fish detection, especially if you're fishing in choppy or turbulent water conditions. The next item on the list is called TVG, and TVG stands for Time Variable Gain. So when this is enabled, the feature automatically adjusts the sensitivity of the sonar signal based on the depth of water that's being scanned. So in shallow water, the TVG is going to reduce the sensitivity to prevent strong echoes from overwhelming the display, resulting in a clear image and then in deeper water TVG is going to increase the sensitivity to detect weaker echoes from the deeper targets. The next item uh, on the main menu is called appearance. This is another extensive option. It's got a lot of features that can be adjusted and all of the items in this menu are going to help change the look of the display on your screen. The first item that we have in the menu is called the color scheme. And the color scheme is gonna allow you to just do exactly what it says, it's gonna change the color scheme displayed on your screen to present different color options. And the color options can vary based on the unit that you have, but on our unit, we have blue, yellow, classic blue, classic white, maroon, red, green, orange, red, green, and gray. The next option is called the color gain. And this is gonna allow you to adjust the intensity of the color displayed on your screen. So for example, increasing the color gain is gonna enhance the brightness and the saturation of the colors on the display, making it easier to distinguish between different strengths of echoes. And then decreasing the color gain is gonna reduce the intensity of the colors, which can be very useful in reducing clutter and noise on the display, particularly in situations with a lot of interference or in very shallow water. The next item is called A-Scope. And when enabled, A-Scope provides a real-time display of your sonar echoes in a vertical column, meaning that this is gonna represent what's in the water column directly beneath your boat. The next item is called Depth Line. 
And this is gonna enable you to select a depth range and view a horizontal line on your sonar at that depth for a visual aid. The next item on the list is called Edge. And the Edge feature, when enabled, is gonna highlight the strongest signal from the bottom to help identify its hardness or softness. And this could be very useful when bottom fishing and also when anchoring to identify the bottom type that's located beneath your boat. The next item on the list is called Fish Symbols. This feature allows you to select the symbols for how you would like to see the fish displayed on your screen. So a fish will appear in these symbols versus the traditional marks on your screen. The next feature is called the Pick Advance. And the Pick Advance adjusts how quickly the sonar screen updates with new information as your boat is moving. Raising the adjustment also works very well in deep water or when the boat is moving quickly. Now the unit comes with four different options. It has a one to one ratio, a two to one ratio, a four to one ratio, and an eight to one ratio. The next appearance feature is called Echo Stretch. Echo Stretch enhances the visibility of the sonar echoes. So when Echo Stretch is activated, it adjusts the display to stretch or compress the intensity levels of the sonar echoes, meaning that weaker echoes are gonna be amplified and then stronger echoes are gonna be compressed to result in a more balanced and detailed sonar image. Echo Stretch also helps reveal subtle details and targets that may be difficult to see otherwise, and it really makes it easier for anglers to identify fish and underwater structure. Now the last option in the appearance menu is the overlay data and this is simply the data that you could see on the screen which is going to be overlaid on that image that you could see. Items that are overlay options on my unit and they could be different on yours but on mine I have the depth, water temperature, unit voltage, speed and the time of day. The next main menu item is the sonar alarms menu. Now these are different types of alarms that you could choose to activate based on their criteria. So the first one in the sonar alarms menu is called the shallow water. Shallow water alarm, when it's activated, it's gonna sound an audible alert or an alarm, if you will, when the depth reaches below the predetermined depth that you set. And this is gonna be really, really useful to ensure that you don't navigate into water that's too shallow for your vessel and you could run ground. The next alarm is called the deep water alarm. So same as a shallow water alarm, but this time you program it for a certain depth of water. And then when it's activated, the deep water alarm is gonna sound an audible alert or an alarm when the depth of water reaches or exceeds the predetermined depth limit. The next sonar alarm is the contour alarm. The contour alarm is gonna alert you when the water depth changes abruptly, indicating a significant drop off. So same as the shallow water and deep water, it's gonna sound an alarm. And what you'll program is a depth range. So you're gonna program a shallow and a deep. And if you go below the shallow or above the deep, it's going to sound the alarm. Now this alarm could be really useful in alerting you of sudden changes in bottom structure if you're trying to find new fishing locations that may hold fish. And the last alarm that you can activate is called the fish alarm. The fish alarm is a feature that's gonna alert you when fish or underwater targets are detected. So the same as the other alarms, when it's activated, the fish alarm is gonna sound an audible alert. The next main menu item is called sonar recording, and this is gonna allow the users to record the sonar data while they're on the water. You can also record your sonar data to review it at a later time using your Active Captain application. Then you can screen record the images from your phone and it saves the recordings to your phone's photos. The next menu option is the advanced settings section. The first item in this menu is called the shift feature. The shift feature is one of my favorite features. It's so much that we have a separate video on this feature and we show you how we use it to mark squid and bait in very deep water when we're sword fishing. So if you really, if you fish in deep water, you're really gonna wanna check this video out. This video is part of our Garmin Marine Electronics playlist and the shift feature, when enabled, is gonna allow you to shift the entire sonar image up or down, meaning that you could select a depth range that you wanna view and then slide the view up or down so that you only look at that selected range. So for example, when we're sword fishing, I like to set the range usually anywhere between two to 400 feet. 
and then I slide the view all the way to the bottom. And this is gonna allow me to only view two to 400 feet from the bottom and only that. And this is gonna allow me to zoom in, higher resolution, get a better return on my screen, and really dial into what's underneath the boat in deep water. The next advanced setting uh, feature is called the bottom track. And this is gonna allow the sonar to track and display the contour of the bottom even as the boat moves. So when the bottom track is enabled, the sonar continuously adjust to maintain a clear view of the bottom structure and it's going to compensate for the changes in your speed water depth and changes in the surface conditions the next advanced setting uh, is the temp source this is going to allow the user to select a source of the water temperature if applicable so on our right now what we're looking at we're looking at my r111 which is my 2k transducer it's there's no option on there for me because this transducer doesn't physically touch the water so we read water temperature from a different transducer. we have two uh, mounted on our boat the next section in the settings menu is the installation section so the first item within this menu is the transmit rate and the transmit rate is going to determine how frequently the sonar transmits signals into the water so a higher transmit rate means the sonar sends out more signals per second and it's going to provide a more detailed and up-to-date view of what's beneath the boat now this could be really really useful when you're fishing in shallow water then on the other hand a lower transmit rate is going to reduce the number of signals sent per second and this could be very beneficial in deep water or when you're moving at a high rate of speed the next item within the installation menu is the transmit power and the transmit power determines the strength of the sonar signal sent into the water the next item in the installation section is going to be called filter width and the filter width what it does is it adjusts the width of the sonar beam affecting the level of detail and sensitivity of the sonar so a narrow filter width gives you more concentrated and detailed image of what's directly below the boat but it's gonna narrow the width of the area that you can see so a wide filter width it's gonna broaden your sonar beam covering a large area below the boat and this setting could be very useful in deep water or when you're searching for fish and structure over a wider area the last menu item in the installation section is called transducers now this is gonna show you the transducers that are connected Connected within your system and this is really good for troubleshooting uh, if your transducer is not working so if your transducer is not showing up on this list within the menu option that means that the system is not recognizing it as being connected to your system and the last item within the sonar settings menu is called edit overlay and this allows you to overlay additional information on your screen from the selected menu items and the items that you can add or edit to the overlay are the data navigation, top bar items, and bottom bar items. All right, so now you have a very in-depth knowledge and idea of what each of the sonar settings can do to help improve your fishing game going forward. Hopefully this video is gonna change your fishing game, help you catch more fish, find new fishing spots, and improve your overall sonar knowledge. Now, if you wanna learn how to master the shift feature, check out this video next and enhance your deep water fishing game. Thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.